Welcome to another episode of This Old Hoop Deal, where I take this piece of crap and try and make it into something a little more pretty, I hope. As you can see over my right shoulders, after six long months, the new seats have finally come in. Maya, wherever she is, there she is, Maya and I are going to be removing the old seats from inside the truck, and once the seats are out of the truck, we're going to go over the new seats, take a look at them, see how they came out. I think they look pretty good, but we're going to see how they mount together to the brackets, and then I'm going to get them installed in the truck with my helper. You ready to go? Ah, she wants to say hi first. Go ahead. Hi. You ready to go? Let's get to work. As you can see, I've removed the stock seating. I also removed the passenger side seat belt since they went up through the existing seats. On the new seats, they're gonna go in between around the center seat. So let's take a look at our new seats. Okay, so with the new seats, you get a full length mounting bracket, which only really mounts into the outer two bolts. You get the two mounting arms and you get a bolt kit. So now without further ado, like Vanna White did for the wheel, let me get Maya to pull open these uh, new seats. You ready, Maya? Yes! What do you gotta say? Let's have a look at these seats. Okay, Maya, let's do that. Let's unwrap them. Yeah. Can you unwrap that one from the front? Pull it off the bottom there? A little farther, it's stuck on the little end piece there. Maya, it's stuck on the little bottom. On this side. All right, now that I've got them out of the bed of the truck, we should be able to get a pretty good look. Move over, baby. Should be able to get a pretty look, pretty good look at these. They have the uh, power lumbar support switch. We've got the uh, recline knob here to tilt the seat backwards and forwards. The center seat does the same thing. There's a knob right here that you can pull and it allows the seat to open and close. As I said, there's this nice glove box sort of pocket here make good use of that and then the same things on the driver's side or on the passenger side each seat has a control knob here so you can slide the seat forward and backwards let's get these mounted to the subframe in the bed so we can quickly go over these uh, instructions it has every single bracket for every truck that these fit into the subframe no longer looks like this it's actually slightly different and it has a cutout in the back well, at least the one for my model truck, the uh, 1992 C1500. I would guess it's the same for all 88 to 99 Chevy trucks, Suburban, GMC, etc. You get two of the outside brackets like this. And I'm gonna show you those right now. On the passenger side, you have the one with the extended front. I'm not really sure what this is for. It's probably for one of the other model trucks, but really, you don't need that. These two bolts here, I bolted them in temporarily just so I can line up the subframe and then tighten these bolts down. I did the same thing on the driver's side over there. That way I can get this into position. As I stated before, there's an, a cutout in the back of this subframe that needs to go towards the back of the transmission because it's at an angle with the front part higher than the rear. Okay, so I believe the easiest way to do this is to flip the middle seat upside down flip the subframe upside down, mount the four bolts into there because the four bolts for the middle are not mounted to the frame of the seat like the passenger and the driver's side seat are. They actually come completely out of the middle seat. So it's kind of hard to arrange them because when you push it into the subframe, they're gonna pop back out. So I think this will be the easiest way. I can drive them in from underneath, hold them with a wrench and get them tight. So let's do that really quick. Yep, just like that. See, I'm gonna put a washer on 
top like that. We'll put the nut on top like this. Right. Again, give me another one. Same thing. Give me the nut and bolt and the washer. Got it? Give me this, this, and this. Excellent. Sharp on the bottoms there, so be careful. You need to get the subframe and watch your hands against the bottom. Okay, guy, where your hands are, take it on the subframe. Don't touch the seats. There you go. Lift and up and over. Fall out the truck. seats right here. scratch the door panels or any of the new dash with these bits because they're sharp and don't scratch yourself either with your legs. Um, Maya, go to the back of the truck please. Okay, we're going right through here, right into there. Be very careful. All right, Maya, stay right where you are. Um, you're just going to lift it up, put your end down on the back here, and then you'll be able to take it right off the back. You follow? Ready? All right, so that was not the easiest to task. I think it's quite heavy, but we got it in. So we're gonna line it up between the seat belts here, get our little bolt holes done. We got two on this side, two on the driver's side, and then we're gonna pull our seat belts through the center here for both of those. So give me a second, we're gonna do that. So hopefully these are showing up on camera. These are the Qualex, I believe it's uh, 402040 low back American seats from seatsfortrucks.com. There'll be a link in the description below that takes you to where I got these from and all the details for exactly what these are and what I put into them and what I paid for them. I'm really happy with them. So I'm going to use them and then I'll give you guys an update in a month or two to see if they're still just as comfortable and how they worked out with the kids and whatnot. We have the uh, electric lumbar support for the driver's seat here and the pull and the matching set on the uh, passenger side. A nice velvety seat here. They're low back so they don't go above the windows. You have the center seat with seat belt. The brand new LMC truck seat belts that I put in, in the last video. These are wicked comfy. I am gonna have to shorten the adapter on this steering wheel because unless I'm driving like this, it's uh, pretty close there. So if I were to pull it down, it's kind of sitting right in my lap. So I'm gonna shorten the adapter on the column here. That'll fix that. 
We've got the pockets underneath this. So you pull this lever here. You can fold down the middle seat. You've got a nice little armrest here. You can open it up. You've got a nice big pocket inside here as well. And your cup holders, passenger seat. So if it's just uh, you and the wife or girlfriend, you got two seats and an armrest or pull this up and you got a nice bench. For me, I got two kids, so little one goes in the middle, big one goes on the outside and it's nice and comfy in here. The seats are a thousand times more comfortable than what I had in here before. And as you can see, these are nice dark black. They barely even show up on the camera aside from this massive light that's right here. So these are the, um, I think I got the seven spring, it was called add-on for all of the seats. This way it can hold more weight. Uh, by default, it comes with, I think, four springs in each seat. I wanted to make sure these had longevity, so I had seven springs set up in each of the seats, as well as the lumbar and the recline. The seats go both forward and backwards by pulling that, but since I'm holding the camera, it's kind of hard to show you. I'm going to throw the kids in here really quick and take them out for a ride, and we'll see how they work. I approve. My approves. I'm ridiculously happy with how this interior has turned out. It looks like a brand new truck. I'm going to pick up next week, Tuesday. I'm having uh, Frankie from FM Upholstery is gonna make me some custom visors to match my headliner. So I'm gonna take this over there and have him bang that out for me and I'll put it on the uh, video so you guys can see how that's all done. And um, see some stuff I may have somebody else do, but for the majority, I'll do everything myself. But we are finally on the exterior of this truck. And as you can see right here, I've already got some Rust-Oleum with a bunch of different color pearls and an automotive clear coat. I have some things that I need to paint pur purple, pink, and some of this uh, metal flake with clear. So that's what all of these are for. The truck will kind of be a close to this, but with a color shifting pearl. So like I said, these are all different shades of Rust-Oleum and they have uh, pearl, purple pearl shot over with an automotive clear coat from Speedo Coat. There was no reactions. If done properly, it creates a beautiful, protected paint job that should last years to come. So more on that in the next video. I'm going to do a whole series on Rust-Oleum stuff, so look out for those. That's going to do it for today's video. If you haven't already, please subscribe if this is your kind of content. If you got anything, if you got anything from this video, or you just like the seats, or you want to be friendly, hit that like button. Take a look at my playlist when this is over. Take a look at how we got here. The inside of this truck was completely stripped out and rebuilt from nothing. Now we're going to do the exact same thing to the outside, then the engine, then the suspension. So stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next video.